This is exactly what I would want, right? And this is multiple locations, New York City, London, and it's taking the coordinates. That's what I asked for. And I'm asking for weather information. Brilliant. I mean, this is the power of open source large language models that now you will have because you're able to run this on your local machine. And I'm super excited for you to experience this. What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I recently posted this video about running an open source model that is the Mixtral ATX 7B on a GPU. And a bunch of you reached out to me asking, hey, how can I easily run some local models, like run some large language models that are open source on my local machine? So I decided to like make this video specifically around that. And I feel like this is probably the easiest way to run large language models on your machine. And the project that we are going to be using is called Olama that allows you to actually run these open source large language models easily. Now, one of the caveats that you need to be aware of is there are different types of models available they're all of different sizes so depending on the kind of machine you have you will get that much experience so, so the way you want to think about this is like if you have a model with like 7 billion parameters you need at least 8 gigabytes of ram if you have a model with like 13 billion parameters you need at least 16 gigs of ram and if you have anything more than that say 30 32 you need at least 64 gigabytes of ram now typically you want a gpu and use that gpu power with its uh, you know memory but uh, in your case we'll just use easy models like llama 2 or mistral and we'll use really quantized versions of it that are small in size maybe 5 gigs and then run them on our laptop here so that's what i'm going to walk you through so let's jump into it all right, so what we have to do is first go to olama.ai and that's where we will go and actually download olama to our system now depending on which machine you use you will be able to download the file so we have versions for mac os and linux i have a mac so that's what i'm going to download for windows it says it's going to come soon so download that and once you install it you will have olama up and running on your system and the other thing that you want to be aware of is that you can actually go to this models page and when you go to this model page, you can see different types of models that are available. So you have Llama 2, Mistral, Lava, Mixtral, a bunch of models available. You can actually click on these models to go and read the model card. Now, one of the things that I would recommend to you here is just be aware that when you are running local models, there is this memory recommendation that is if you run a 7 billion uh, parameter model, you have to have at least 8 gigs of RAM on your machine. If you run 13 billion um, parameter model, you should have at least 16 gigs of RAM and 70 billion parameter model would need at least 64 gigs of RAM on your machine. Now it's always good to have uh, you know machines or laptops or even servers that have GPU and you have GPU VRAM because you would want you know the GPU and its VRAM to be used for you know processing but because we are trying to run these models locally on simple mach machines with like 8 gigs of RAM or say 16 gigs of RAM I would say uh, select 7 b models or 13 billion parameter models now again there are some interesting things that you can do as well so here just to start off let's let's first go and and i've already installed this on my machine obviously so let's go to my terminal right i have, let's go to this terminal which i like actually and i'm just gonna say olama list okay and this is how you can actually see all the different models that you're running locally now i already have the mistral um, you know 7b running here which actually performs better than um, you know llama 2 uh, as well as certain other models so i mean that model worked really well for me so i just was using that model but now here we're going to install llama 2 actually so the way you will have to do is just write olama run llama 2 and when you do that what's going to happen is it's going to pull the manifest down that means all the files required to you know run this model locally so we're going to let this complete this can take uh, you know as you can see for me at least it's taking four and a half minutes but depending on your network and your connectivity this can be faster so we'll wait for that to complete and then we'll come back for llama to download it so all i'm going to do again now is just to olama run uh, llama 2 okay and as soon as I do it, I get to now interact with the LLM. So we're going to basically ask it, hey, who is the president of France? Okay. And let's see what it responds with, you know. So basically, the model is up and running and it's going to start responding to us now. So it's saying that 
I cannot provide you with the latest information, but as of 2023, it's a manual Macron, right? So that's that's uh, the model, model model responding to us and it's working fine. So this is the first part of how you can run a model locally. You can actually just do slash buy. And when you do that, you actually stop the model and you're out of it. You can also do stuff like Olama list, not models. And when you do that, you will see that you have downloaded multiple models and in my case i have downloaded two models all right so if you go to the olama git repo you know and if you scroll down a little bit you have a lot of information here which is pretty much what is on the website but there is a list actually that i like i like this library actually and kind of points out there are different models available from llama 2 all the way to you know vicuna or llama 270b uh, again, different models are available, Phi 2. If that's not good enough for you, you can actually click on this page and this is actually gonna take you to uh, everything, you know. So here you can type Mixtral, um, you know, and all the Mixtral models, the Dolphin model, the Nose Hermes model is gonna be there. Uh, if you do Open Hermes, that model is available as well, Open Hermes 2.5. So the bunch of models available here and folks keep, uh, you know, putting these models here that you can kind of connect to or download directly through Olama. And all you will have to do is say, if you want to download Mixtral, right? You have to just copy Olama run Mixtral, copy that, or just come in and type Olama run Mixtral. And it's gonna, and when you enter, it's gonna download that model and it'll be up and running. So it's as simple. Uh, this is actually one of the easiest way to run, uh, you know, local models in my opinion. You also have other solutions like LM Studio um, that I'm going to show you in another video, but this is probably the easiest method to get started. Now, the other thing that we want to do here now is basically now the interactive platform that we have here. So let's do this. Let's run uh, Mistral because that's the model I really enjoy using. So we're going to run Olama, run Mistral. That's what we are doing. And this will bring us into the Mistral environment or the Mistral large language model. We are interacting to it uh, or with it through the terminal here. So I'm going to say, uh, what is, you know, 45 multiplied by 21 plus 78. Okay. So, and it's going to like go through, you know, this setup. And again, you see that it first, it used board mass, which is what we wanted to first do multiplication and then addition. So it did that and looks like a, it's a, it's the right answer. Now, this is not pretty neat. You know, we are used to using OpenAI and we are used to using a web interface or an app actually. So let's figure out a way to see how we can have that app interface, you know? So that's going to be chat UI now. All right, so in the documentation, there are multiple methods that have been provided for, you know, UI, you know? So there are web and desktop apps, you know, Bionic, GPT, HTML, chatbot. So chatbot UI, a bunch of, solutions are provided here but the one that we are going to test here or the one that we are going to download is going to be the web ui which is uh it's got almost 4.1 uh, k stars or 384 folks so uh so that's looks like pretty good so there are ways to kind of run it you can go through the documentation here you know we can actually build our own docker image and you know get the web ui to work locally but what i want to do is i just want to run it you know on a web ui and have it you know without installing docker so that's the alternative installation method and that's what we're going to do so the requirements are we need bun and node.js and python okay so let's start this process and see if we can pull it off so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just git clone this and i'm going to go back to my other terminal all right so let's just go here uh, we have nothing in this and i'm just gonna say all right just get clone it okay so we're cloning this olama web ui and then we're gonna go into the web ui okay so let's go step by step all right and just to ls and there are a bunch of files available here okay so that's cool and now we're gonna do copy hyphen rp example environment dot environment so that's what we are doing okay and so let's just do that let's just follow the steps one by one and that's the best way to kind of start learning things if you're not a techie person read documentation try these things if it doesn't work if you have an error go ask people 
ask the large language model, hey, why am I seeing this error? Again, we're gonna now use Node.js, you know, I have Node, and we're gonna build this. And building is a process of compilation in a way, you know, you put everything together. Um, so yeah, it seems like I have pretty much everything. There's a warning, I'm gonna ignore that for now. And we're gonna just do and be print, okay? And this is where we are actually building um, the web UI so that we can have it kind of run. And once it's done, okay, uh, there are options, right? I mean, we could have used Bun or Node.js. I use Node uh, for a bunch of other things that I do. So Node is what we used. If you use Bun, you can use Bun. But here, uh, once it's started, we will actually just go into CD dot slash backend. Okay, seems like build was complete. So now I'm gonna do that. CD dot slash backend. And then I'm gonna just say, okay, let's actually just look at all the files that we have here. We have a bunch of files. Okay, so that's good. And we have this requirements file here. Okay, and typically a requirement file basically points to all the packages. So we can just do cat requirements dot text and it's all these different libraries that are supposed to be there for this to work properly. So what I'm going to do is basically go back, see, go back to the same path and we're going to just do CD slash backend. And then I'm going to just say pip and instead of pip, I'm going to do pip three install because basically I'm using Python three. So it's going to install that for me and you know, all the different dependencies. That's what's downloading right now. We'll wait for a few minutes for this to get completed. All right, so we have all the dependencies and the requirements uh, downloaded. So we are ready to go now. So all we'll have to now go in and type. Uh, first, let's just clear this is sh start dot sh. Basically, that's the start command. And when you do that, it's actually going to create a, a link, uh, basically a web UI page that locally runs on your system with this port 8080. And now what we are going to do is basically bring this in and you know, type it in. As soon as you type it in, you can see that this is the page and it's amazing. Everything is running. It's saying you are on the Olama web UI page. So sign in now because we are going to create um, everything locally. You know what uh, is happening is you are storing some of this information locally. So you don't really have to put your actual information in your actual email because it's all local database information. So go sign up, add your name, your Gmail and your password. Okay. And then just come in and click sign on or sign in. So here I'm going to just say David at gmail.com. That's the you know, email I use. And I'm just going to put the password that I had previously used to register. Now I have logged in and this is the experience. Now, if I took the screenshot and share this with anybody quickly and you know, you might feel, oh, this looks like chat GPT. And that's exactly what this is. Now, the other thing that you want to know is that you actually can go and select multiple models. So I have two different models, Llama 2 and Mistral. So I can select whichever model I want to chat with on a particular page and then just start using these things. The other benefit is that say you want to use a specific code model or like a cybersecurity model, you can bring those fine tuned models in and then have multiple models running on your system at the same time. Now, these models obviously are small enough that they can run parallelly. Of course, you will need memory to have multiple models run together. But again, that's pretty cool, right? So I'll just select Mistral and I'm gonna just say, hey, uh, give me some ideas, uh, five creative ideas that I'm just copy pasting from that system uh, from that is available. So again, it's responding to me and create a family art book, make cards, create an art calendar. These are pretty good, actually. All right, let's do the one that I really like. Give Python code for the snake game. Uh, let's see. And Usually I've seen many models get this wrong. I know Mistral usually gets it right, but here it shows the right library, which is the cursor's library, and it's actually starting to give out code. Now it looks pretty good, right? I mean, I'm super excited that, you know, you can now run a large language model locally. And this looks like this, this experience is amazing, right? So that's awesome. I also want to say, okay, give me some sample JSON. Uh, for locations and weather coordinates. Let's see how that data look. Okay, it's still responding, by the way. It's still going on, wow. All right, so that's that's the whole response. Looks pretty neat. I mean, I'll have to copy paste this and see if everything kind of works well. But let's just ask this question. 
Oh, and it's starting to produce JSON code. Look at that. This is exactly what I would want, right? And there's multiple locations, New York City, London, and it's taking the coordinates. That's what I asked for. And I'm asking for weather information. Brilliant. I mean, this is the power of open source large language models that now you will have because you're able to run this on your local machine. And I'm super excited for you to experience this, right? Um, so with this, this is the most easiest way to run large language models locally on your machine, especially those are open source. Um, the other thing that we initially spoke about is obviously the terminal is available to you. So you can obviously go in and, you know, run an Olama run Mistral command and you will have the terminal and you can interact with. But why do that when you can actually have a web UI that feels like chat GPT and pretty much exactly what you are used to. Uh, and that's the world uh, that you want to live in. So with that, you know, this video is probably complete. All right, so that is the power of running large language models that are open source on your machine. Now, you can obviously go and use ChatGPT and, you know, pay, you know, $20 of subscription. I actually do that and I feel I get my value from spending that money. But my belief is that as we get into 2024, there will be more models that are gonna come out that will be open source, that will be as good as GPT-4. And already the Mistral models, the Mixtral medium, are already as good as, you know, GPT-3.5 and hitting very close to GPT-4. So what if you can run these open source models locally on your machine using this method that I showed you and experience the things that you want to, your data, stays within your ecosystem, doesn't go to ChatGPT. They're not going to use that to train anything. So you feel more secure. And that is the power of open source. And I think it's pretty fascinating. And I feel the future is really, really bright for large language models in the open source ecosystem. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And I love making these videos. I have this baby channel where I just keep up with tech and AI and you know whatever I'm learning, I'm posting about it so other people can learn. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what else you would like to learn. Again, my channel is still learning and still growing. So I'm obviously going to make some mistakes here and there. But I really appreciate you following me. Or if you want, please subscribe to my channel and click on that bell notification to get updates. I will try to make a video at least once a week. But, um, you know, I also have a family to take care of and spend time with the family. So sometimes I kind of mess it up, but I am trying to be as consistent as I can be. So until I see you again, stay true, stay consistent. Hit me up in the comment section on what you would like me to talk about next. With that, catch you later. Bye bye.